Hi there, I made a gun. Joke's on you, it doesn't shoot anything. That would be illegal. But it sure does look cool, and that's the main reason I made it. It only took me six years and three separate tries because I procrastinate a lot and also have a tiny man inside my head that wants everything to be perfect. So, since this is the third script I've written for this video, get ready for a very long and possibly confusing story about how I made this. It all started seven years ago, when little Easton had his first taste of video games. He had gotten a PS4 for Christmas that year, and the first and last game he ever played was Destiny, also known as a game that you start because it looks fun, but keep playing because of FOMO. It's also where this gun is from. After becoming enthralled with the lore of Destiny, he decided that he wanted more. He wanted to not just use a gun in the game, but to have it in real life. This led him to dark territories such as Craigslist and eBay, but they did not provide the items he sought. So he decided, I'll make one myself. His first attempt was through the use of an archaic technique known as foam smithing. Necessary for this ritual were rare materials known as floor mats, which I conveniently had a lot of in my basement, so I just stole them without asking my parents. Once the essential items had been gathered, the crafting could begin. Following the ancient text he discovered, he sliced and diced, and other words for cutting things up because I, I'm not a thesaurus. After seven days and seven nights, he was finished and his greatest achievement- Yeah, yeah, I, I made this. It's made out of foam. It doesn't look terrible, but it's not the best thing in the world. I mean, you can't pull the trigger, the hammer doesn't go back, the cylinder doesn't spin, and really the only thing it's good for is throwing it at people. So after being yelled at by my inner perfectionist for a couple months, I decided to try again. But this time, I had a 3D printer. And using the magic that is computer-aided design and 3D printing, I decided to create the most accurate replica of the Ace of Spades hand cannon from Destiny that anyone has ever produced in the history of people trying to make replicas of this gun. Or the Marot Tauschkafit to Hepathot Marot, for short. It really rolls off the tongue. So, after a couple weeks of modeling, I came back and printed out all those sweet pieces. Nice. Quick side note. I learned 3D modeling in high school, and it's one of the things that I've used the most since then. And if you like to make anything, or if you want to make anything, and I mean anything, then I strongly suggest that you learn how to use CAD software. Even though I printed out all the pieces, there were still some hiccups that I had to deal with. For one, I kind of forgot about a thing called tolerance, which gives pieces a little wiggle room to fit together, so that when you're assembling them, you don't have to do any modification. And I still wasn't very good at modeling weird looking organic features. So even though I got it all printed out and I even painted it a little bit, this kind of happened. I didn't even say you could come in. We got problems, big ones. Huh? What? Problems with what? With this. It ain't good enough. What do you mean that's not good enough? That took me like four weeks to model. You see this? It's all square and stuff. This ain't comfortable. How are you going to hold this? And the trigger still doesn't do the thing. Fine, and fine. I won't even finish it. I'll just make another one. You happy? Yeah, he got to me. But this time, I was determined to finish the gun and also satisfy my inner perfectionist. I sharpened my CAD skills. I delved deep into the machinations of revolvers in order to truly understand how they worked. I also just learned a lot by watching more YouTube videos about making things. Although, this video isn't exactly about how I made something. I do intend to do something like that in the future, but I started this project before I even decided that I wanted to record anything, so I don't really have enough footage to do something like that. But oh boy, one thing I do have enough footage of is me sanding. Of the 20 or so hours of footage that I got from this project, 10 of those are sanding. That's it. I'm sorry, I just have to vent for a second about how much sanding I had to do with this. You see. 3D printing leaves a bunch of these little lines in the parts because it lays down material layer by layer. And this means that I had to go over every piece with sandpaper, filler, and paint until they were perfectly smooth. And that really takes a lot out of you. I mean, when you're working on a project that you care about, like this project for me, and you run into those steps that you just 
really hate, but you have to do, such as sanding, it can be really demotivating. I mean, I'm sure it's the same for anybody that makes anything. It's not always enjoyable. Not everything you do is something that's fun. I mean, like I said, I have 10 hours of footage from this, but in reality, that 10 hours is spread over two weeks of the process. It took me about two weeks to sand all of the pieces. Barely any of that was filmed, because who wants to watch someone sand for 40 hours? In the moment, it was frustratingly boring, but now that I can look back and see the final results of all my hard work, it just completely makes it all worth it. Once I was done sanding, I could finally start the last step, painting. Almost every skill I used in this video is something that I learned from the internet, and painting is no exception. So here's my easy to follow and mostly safe guide to prop painting. Step one, identify the colors you'll need and go buy them. It doesn't matter if you get them from Amazon, Hobby Lobby, or that weird box down by the river. Step two, experiment. Get to know the type of paints you're using. If it's a rattle can paint, try soaking it in warm water before painting. That'll help it spray a finer mist. Just don't put them in hot water they will explode. Don't ask me how I know that. Every type of paint is different, so getting to know how each paint acts can be really helpful for not messing up your final piece. Step three, masking. This is the step where you cover up everything you don't want to get paint on. Kind of like when your extended family comes over for the holidays, so you just hide any knickknacks that could lead to awkward conversations. Step five, painting. Now that all of your dirty little secrets are hidden, you can finally let loose. Painting is something that takes time, so going in multiple light coats makes the process easier. If you put too much paint on in one coat, you could end up with drips, and that could mean more sanding. And take it from me, you don't want that. Once you're happy with how your paint turned out, I would recommend hitting it with a clear coat of some kind, just to make sure nothing messes up that nice finish. Ooh. Now, that definitely isn't the best guide in the world, but this video slowly turned more towards entertainment than education. Even so, I do hope to provide some helpful tips for anyone that's trying to do stuff like this. Like how you can use masking fluid to create a weathered paint effect by applying it before painting and then rubbing it off once the paint has dried. That's a really good technique for weathering, and I do hope to go into more detail with future videos. But for now, I really just want to finish this video so I can start making something else. So here's some footage of me assembling the gun while I ramble about how it goes together. I designed it so that everything would be held together with screws, not glue. This is mostly due to the fact that if I needed to take it apart for any reason, I could do so rather easily. The trigger mechanism has three parts, the trigger, hammer, and this tiny arm that goes in the hammer. The cylinder is removable so that I could easily access some of the screws that hold this arm in place. For painting the spades and the stripes, I used stencils that I designed and cut out on my vinyl cutter. I also did a little bit of weathering with some watered down acrylic paints after putting it all together. And that's it really. All that I can say now that I'm done is that it feels like my child just graduated high school and is moving off to college, which means I can do whatever I want, as long as it doesn't take another seven years of my life.